Well, this is a rare sight of the show. I am on board the Bering 70. Now, Bering are a relatively new company that build long range explorer type vessels out of steel and aluminium. This one actually has a steel hull with a GRP superstructure, but in future they will all be aluminium on top. But this is a proper long range cruising vessel. So it's a displacement hull, but look at the deck gear up here on the foredeck. You can see what this boat's priority is. And you can also see just how narrow that bow is. So it should punch through a sea very effectively. Now looking aft, you can see the very business look like looking bridge station, lovely sun pad area, nicely set down. So it's actually quite well protected in there. You're not gonna roll off there. And then big upright angular screens that protect the bridge area. And look at the size of these side decks too. Really tall boards. I mean, these are almost waist height on me and very wide. So it's extremely easy to move down here. Now there is a side access door into the bridge here, but we're gonna go this way first. Really nice chunky stainless steel guardrails. And you can see they bothered to polish out all the little weld joints. So there's a nice attention to detail there. And then this is the cockpit. We're obviously at a boat show. There's quite a lot going on here, but you can see there's a lovely protected cockpit and really good headroom as well. You can see up here is well over 2.1, 2.2 meters of headroom. And then let's go up to the flybridge while we can. It's quite shallow, steep steps up to the flybridge. And again, protected by a big hard top there's no opening section in this, but then you've got such a lot of air circulating around and it's so tall that you don't really need any extra sunlight coming through there. Nice diner area here. This actually folds up so that you can have the C shape of seating around here, but also it lies flat. So you've got a big sun pad area. And then moving back to the aft end, it's where the tender is stowed up on the main deck. You can see there's a crane that lifts that up and drops it into the sea. There's a storage locker here for fuel and so on for the tender. You can have a quick peek in there. They've got various other show bits of kit in there, but the idea is you can keep your water skis and fuel and other bits and pieces for the tender in there. And then a big, big wet bar area. So there's a sink here. I'm not even sure I'm, uh, it's properly heavy molding there. We've got gas struts to support it now. And you can see there's a grill on one side and a hob on the other and then two big bridges underneath. This is obviously where you spend a lot of your daytime up on the flybridge, entertaining your guests. And then there's a small helm station. It's really almost more of a wing station. There's no windscreen around here at all, but you have got a screen, a big upright wheel, throttles, and everything you need, you can control the ship up here, but I'm told that the owner of this boat really prefers to helm it from the bridge downstairs. But it does just mean on a nice day like today, you can sit up here and get a bit of breeze through your hair. And then we'll go down these fairly steep steps again. And, in, and this gives some idea of how sturdy this boat is. Look at that, that's not a simple sliding glass door. It's a really solid, reinforced hinge door with proper watertight seals up and down. Absolutely locks it firmly in place. And then there's another one on this side that obviously opens up too and into the main saloon. But let's go downstairs for the moment. Hopefully it's a little bit emptier downstairs. And we can see the main accommodation zone down here. So this is the owner's cabin, which is amidships and facing aft, but it occupies the full beam of the boat. And without those side decks stealing space, you can see it is actually quite a wide boat. It's only 70 foot long, but it has got plenty of space. Got a couple of hanging wardrobes, nice little seat area on one side, lots more storage everywhere you look. The blinds are down at the moment, but you have got three little small windows here in the hull. So even though it's a steel boat, you do still get a decent amount of light down here. And then an ensuite bathroom. 
fairly conventional. There's a nice walk-in shower behind the door there. And a little window, it doesn't open, but it does allow some natural light in. Nice little shelving unit, more storage all around here, more storage hanging up there. And then there is what they tend to refer to as the sort of kids cabin. So it's all sort of part of this one area here. Uh, and there's a double down below, there's a single up top. Again, hull window, plenty of storage, but rather nice for a family to have these two cabins together. And then there's a VIP further forward in the bow. And it's also, so this bathroom here is very close obviously to the kids cabin or the guest cabin, but it also means it's a really convenient day head because it's right next to the stairs coming down, down from the saloon. So you can use that as a day heads. And then there's a little corridor leading to the business end of the yacht. And this is the engine room. And again, this is a very solid watertight compartment. So the whole boat is divided into three watertight compartments. You've got the engine room, you've got this accommodation area, and then there's the forward VIP. But let's go and have a look at the engine room. Now this is a full displacement boat. So there's no point in having massive engines because you're only going to burn a load of fuel and still not go any faster. So this has twin 305 horsepower Cummins engines with a six and a half thousand litre fuel tank that gives a range of about 3,000 nautical miles. And you can see this is the main tank here and then there are two day tanks either side. So fuel is pumped from the main tank to the day tanks and a proper sight gauge and lots of built-in redundancy here. On a long range yacht like this, you want to be able to absolutely know that it's bulletproof setup. So if one system goes down, you can switch to another and it's the same here. You can see these are the fuel filters. So you can switch from one to the other so you can clean out one and run on the other and then flip it back over and clean out the other while you're running through it. So there's always this dual redundancy and you can see there's one set there, one set there and one set there. So three different sets of fuel filters and a complete fuel polishing system. So you should always have good clean fuel to run. Now it's simple straight shaft design of the engines comes right out the back and the propellers are protected in tunnels with skegs behind them so that uh, if you do happen to run into shallow water it's not going to be propellers that touch first they're protected by skegs. Now here there is a stabilizing system so this should make sure the boat stays on a nice even keel even when you're in a bit of a swell that should make sure that it rides nice and steadily. You've got twin generators either side, big fire system, exhausts. So this is all about going nice and slowly, not using too much fuel, long distances in absolute safety and comfort. And you can see there's that big locking door to make sure that it's all watertight. So now let's take a look back up into the saloon. Now you can see that this has been kept very much open plan. So the galley is amidships on this one with the saloon behind it. I think in the next generation of this particular yacht, they're going to have an aft cabin, sorry, an aft galley, and then the saloon forward. But the owner likes to keep it all open. It's an owner driven yacht. And at 70 feet, it's a really nice size. Actually, you can control this boat as a family just with you as the owner skipper rather than needing to have a crew. Now this is the bridge area and you can see what it looks like with that wrap of glass all the way around it and big upright screens and windscreen wipers. Make sure you can keep on plodding through whatever the weather and a very workmanlike bridge area. So rather than a seat, it's just a stainless steel leaning post, a big upright wooden wheel, very business-like layout controls. You've got your twin touchscreen MFDs. There is thruster here. It's a hydraulic thruster, so you can run it for as long as you like. There's no, no fear of a electronic motor overheating. You've got hydraulics, again, very seaman-like, and this nice little seating area here, so you can have a couple of people riding along with you. Doors out onto the side decks both sides it's really I've already seen those but they are full walk around side decks on both sides so it's very easy yacht to move around and then drops down into 
the VIP cabin forward, which is right in the bow. And because it is quite narrow at the front, it does you do see the, the cabin pinching in towards the bow, but it is a nice little private space with its own separate staircase. So you can keep your VIP guests in complete privacy with you and your family back in the cabin area behind. And then there is of course, an ensuite bathroom here. There's a fan whirring away, which makes a bit of noise, but you have got your own ensuite bathroom here and a big walk-in shower too. So your VIP guests certainly get their own space, their own privacy. And with that big steel displacement hull should be a very comfortable ride. So this particular boat, as it is, is about 2.3 million euros ex taxes. But if you want the kind of boat that will look after you for mile after mile and take you wherever you want to go in complete safety and comfort, then the Bearing 70 is a very interesting long range cruiser. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Do give us a like, subscribe if you can, and turn on your notifications so that whenever we bring you a new video, you can clock in and get a little reminder to view it. Thanks very much for watching.